Okay, hi everyone. Next video then. This one on substitution, uh, integration by substitution. Really love substitution. Substitution is like your handyman, you know, it's the kind of job that will fix everything. Uh, your kind of last resort, work for most things, and can do something a little extra as well. So basically, substitution can do everything reverse chain rule can do, just takes longer. So for those people you know who aren't too good at spotting reverse chain rule, substitution works, but also it can do a lot more. Okay, it can solve a lot more problems. So how does it work? Well, let's say we had an integral like this. Now, hopefully you're recognizing this is a product. So following that last video, how do we approach products? We first think, are they reverse chainable? Definitely. Is the differential of one of these things next to each other? Absolutely. Tan x differentiates the sec squared. So I know that I should be isolating tan squared, adding 1 to the power, dividing by the power, plus c. Quick differentiation to check. Does it work? Yes, we're happy. But what if I couldn't spot that? What if I couldn't spot it? What can we do? Well, the idea of substitution is to reduce something down into basically a C2 problem or a C1 problem even. Okay, and how do we do that? Well, what we do is we change change a variable. Okay, kind of like the chain rule when we let t equal something and we differentiate. We're going to do something similar now. Okay. So I'm going to let u be something. So the fun of substitution is, well, which substitution shall I use? That's half the fun. But in your exam, they'll, they'll tell you what substitution to use. They kind of ruin it for you. But with experience, you know, and in our class, I'm not going to tell you what the substitutions are. I want you to figure it out. So let's say I let u equal tan x, right? So... At the moment, u is tan x. So I want to turn my integral, every place where I have an x needs to be something to do with u, because I'm changing the variable, right? It seems complicated at first, but you'll see what's going on. So here, if I different, because first thing I need to change always is the dx. I need du inst instead of dx. So if I differentiate tan x with respect to x, I get sec squared x, don't I? And du over dx is the same as sec squared x. Can you see that if I <coughs> kind of rearrange, and I say that in inverted commas because it's not a fraction. This is not a fraction, but we do treat it like a fraction. Can you see that if I wrote that as um, sec squared times dx, which it isn't, but for now let's just do a bit of artistic mathematical license or take a bit of artistic mathematical license can you see that du or dx rather is the same as du over sec squared x can you see that if you just rearrange this and make dx the subject now we can replace dx and let's remember that's the first thing we do so tan squared x and now dx has become du over sec squared x. Can you see what's happened here? The sec squared cancels. That's why you change the du first, uh, the dx first. You see what cancels first, and then see what you're left with. So here I've got tan squared u, but as tan squared x du, but we can't integrate because the variables are different, aren't they? I need this to be in terms of u. But what is u? u is tan x. So now we're integrating tan x squared, which is u squared du. Can you see now it's a C1 problem? u squared integrates to a third u cubed plus c. But we didn't start with u's, so we don't finish with u's. u was tan x, so we're left with a third tan cubed x. Do you see? Free substitution. Always the same. So let's try this. If I had to integrate cos cubed x, you could do this normally if you 
store it as that's the same as cos x times cos squared x, isn't it? So with a bit of trickery, we could do this. And cos squared is the same as 1 minus sine squared x. And if we multiplied that out, that's cos x minus cos x sine squared x. So we can integrate the cos x, no problem, can't we? That's sine x, but with a minus, if we differentiate it, so then we get cos x. But we still got this minus cos x sine squared x, so we've got a product. Can you see? One function times another. Is the different, remember, reverse chain rule is our first port of call. Is the chain rule in play there? Absolutely. Sine x does differentiate to cos x. So I isolate that section plus 1 to the power, divide by new power, quick differentiation to check, and it works. So we're happy. But again, what if I didn't see that? Well, maybe there's an easier way of dealing with this. What we need is to substitute, but what should we make u? Notice in the previous question, when I rearranged, when I differentiated this first and then rearranged, the sec squared went on the bottom, didn't it? And it cancelled the sec squared. Is there a way of me cancelling down this, getting rid of that cos cubed? Because if it was cos squared, we could do cos squared. We know how to do that, half plus half cos 2x. So maybe if there's something that would differentiate, which will divide itself, I can get rid of a cos and get cos squared. Let's think about it. Well, sine x differentiates to cos, doesn't it? So du by dx, the first thing we do, so the first thing, isolate u. Second thing, find du by dx and make dx the subject. So du over cos x is dx. Replace dx first. So replace dx first, yeah? So our integral becomes, leave the cos cubed x, not touching that yet, dx is du over cos x. Notice that cos, square, uh, cos cubed has gone to cos squared now, which is exactly what we wanted. But here we got du, here we got something to do with x, so we need to put it in terms of u. Now what is cos squared in terms of u? Because u is sine x. Ah, but cos squared is 1 minus sine squared x, isn't it? So therefore, this has become 1 minus u squared du. See? Now it's a C1 problem. So u minus a third u cubed plus C. And now we didn't start with u, so we don't finish with u's. We have sine x subtract a third sine cubed x plus C. Yeah? And we're happy. Let's go again. So like I say, those two we could have done uh, with reverse chain rule. This one we can't because this 1 plus x square rooted or 1 plus x to the half, the, this is a product, yes, but the inside does definitely not differentiate to x. Maybe we could use by parts because there's a product and there's an x by itself which will break. By parts will work, by the way. And remember that limits are between 3 and 1. So 3 and 1. Now my recommendation, if we're going to use substitution, and often this is in your exam, use this substitution for a question just like this. You're going to change everything in terms of u. So it's very important to know that your limits are in terms of x. So always write x is 3 and x is 1. So it reminds you what you're working with. So what does it make sense to use as substitution? Well, I think it makes sense to use 1 plus x because that's the problem, isn't it? Having 1 plus x all to the half, if I can reduce that down, that makes life a lot easier. So same procedure, 1 make u something, 2 du by dx, so differentiate that, that just becomes 1. Make dx the subject, so du is dx. So I can literally replace my dx by du. So nothing's cancelled at the moment. Remember my limits are still x is 1 and x is 3. So x is 3, x is 1. And now we can start working with this thing. We didn't start with x because we've got u's here. So we need to put u's, x's, sorry, in terms of u. So what is x? Well, x 
it's u take 1, isn't it? So here, this is u take 1. And 1 plus x is our u. So that's u to the half, du. Can you see? And now we can expand this out. So we've still got x is 3 and x is 1. We've got u to the half times u minus 1. So u, if we multiply that out, u times u to the half is u to the 3 by 2. Minus, expand the other one out, u to the half. Now we can integrate. So u to the 3 over 2 plus 1 to the power divided by new power. u to the 3 by 2 divided by new power. And our limits are still in terms of x. So here you have a choice. Because it's a definite integral, we could <coughs> sub, we could change u back to x and sort that out. Or we could change the limits in terms of u. So I'm going to try that. So limits, when x is 3, u equals 1 plus x, so 4. When x is 1, u equals 1 plus x, so 2. So now my limits are 4 and 2. 2 by 5, 5 by 2, 2 by 3, 3 by 2. Now if we whack that into our calculators, we're going to get a value <coughs> using, so that's 2 by 5, 4 to the power of 5 by 2, minus 2 by 3, 4 to the power of 3 by 2, all subtracting 2 by 5, 2 to the power of 5 over 2, minus 2 by 3, 2 to the power of 3 by 2. Now, I'm going to let you finish that off and find out the value. And what we should have done, it's done an aim at the start, remember. You don't need me to know if you're right. So I want you to sub that in, in your calculator, and I want you to make the aim and check that I'm right. If I'm wrong, find my mistake. If I'm right, then at least you can confirm that you're right. So silver calculators, get practicing with those calculators. You don't need me to check integrals with limits in them. Okay, nice one.